He is Smart City Program Manager at Dublin City Council. He's brought a few projects to life, and he's going to talk to us about some of those projects today. Welcome to the stage, Jamie Cudden. Wow, it's kind of weird being back. <laughs> I'm so glad the judges aren't there. Um, so uh, yeah, Aidan, thanks very much for the introduction and a really inspiring morning just hearing some of the ideas and the concepts that have, that have come through. And I really love the idea of the Future Tech Challenge and it's something that's very close to my heart leading a smart city program in Dublin City Council. So today I'm just going to talk about maybe, I suppose trying to inspire you with some of the ideas and concepts that we've brought to reality across the City Council and across the Dublin region. And uh, I mean, I lead the Smart City program. And I mean, if I look at this next slide, I'm, I'm just thinking about the future. Um, I'm thinking about all the great things we need to do for our city in terms of sustainability, climate action, um, better engagement with citizens, delivering better services. But I'm also thinking about how do we future-proof the city and how do we use new emerging technologies like you're hearing today to benefit the city to, I suppose, deliver these great outcomes for our citizens and also help us deliver at better services. So it's all about the future and how do we grab some of these emerging technology opportunities and embed them into terms of how we deliver our city services. And I get excited about drones. I remember presenting to our senior management team about five years ago about things like 5G drones and, uh, and how this was all going to take off, literally. And they were looking at me like, he's mad. <laughs> it's about 20 years out. Um, a really exciting project that's uh, funded through um, I suppose deeper, the Innovation Fund, is our initiative on looking at the potential of drones. And one thing that we noticed is, you know, over 14 different sections and units in the City Council using drones or looking to use drones. You're seeing some of the examples of some of the projects that we're building. You know, this is building a, a drone kind of uh, visual model of the city and then looking at how we might engage and put new buildings uh, into, the, into the picture. We're working closely with the Fire Brigade who are part of uh, Dublin City Council and looking at, I suppose, the potential of drones to you know, deliver better first responder services. And it's absolutely transforming uh, services across the board. And what we want to do is make sure that rather than ad hoc, how do we make sure that this scales and how can it support, I suppose, the services that we deliver across uh, local government? This is a really exciting one. What you can do with things like building control and planning assessments and drones and get up to places and locations where you could never have done uh, previously and do surveying and mapping and it, it's just phenomenal what's possible uh, with this technology and one project that really inspired me uh, during lockdown working with I suppose uh, Tourism Ireland and Dublin City Council I don't know if you saw this but this was the one of the world's biggest drone displays working with Intel can you imagine 500 connected drones none of them crashed and they delivered this it was really inspiring and I guess it got global traction we were still in business during the pandemic able to innovate and do great stuff for the city. So this type of project is absolutely, you know, something that we, and as a, as a sector, need to get behind because there's issues with privacy, there's issues with safety, there's issues with compliance and European regulation, but the potential, as we see, with companies like Manadrone, uh, beyond line of sight drones, is really gonna, this will deliver real opportunities uh, for doing new things, delivering new business opportunities, delivering new services for our cities. There's another area that you know, I talk about, you know, add some connectivity to physical things like a bike, a scooter. I mean, how many people use bleeper bikes, Moby bikes? Those guys have been some of the big winners in the pandemic. Some of the numbers in terms of trips have really just gone uh, through the roof. But also electric scooters, I know we still don't have them here, but you know, just look how much that sector has taken off. You know, billion dollar companies, unicorn status within months back 2017, 2018. Where is it now? In European cities, look at some of these operators operating in 130, 100 plus cities across Europe. So just shows you how quickly technology is changing and the impact that it's having. Uh, cities and I suppose public sector is really struggling to keep up. So Smart Dublin is an initiative of the four Dublin local authorities. And really what we're trying to do is you know, understand how we engage with the ecosystem and how do we bring that back in to support the services uh, that we deliver, but also deliver new economic uh, opportunities. Um, the next slide. So I talked a lot about technology, um, but you know, really it's not about the technology, it's about delivering solutions to challenges that we face in our cities, whether it's you know, climate action, extreme weather events, congestion. You know, for us over the last five years, it's about working 
with service owners, working with communities, and understanding what those challenges are that we can help prioritize with our innovation and technology and smart city program. We have a portfolio of over 100 projects. It's a really exciting space. It's really scaled up. I think Dublin is absolutely leading the way internationally in some of these areas. And we have a public travel board. So you know, we're open and transparent about what we do. We're not trying to hide things. This is about proper engagement and transparency. So you can see a, a load of cool projects on our, our Smart Dublin Trello board if you want to uh, check it out afterwards. But like what we're here about today, you know, what's unique about Dublin, what's unique about Ireland? We've got on our doorstep world-leading technology companies. You've got AWS, you've got Cisco, you've got IBM, you've got Google, all on our doorstep. You've got amazing startups, you've got amazing research centers, and engaged citizens. So, for us, how do we kind of take the challenges of our city and the opportunity of innovation, the opportunity of technology, and marry that together in what I think is a really unique uh, city that is Dublin? And this idea, we heard about it today, the test bed. Dublin has a test bed. You know, we're big enough, and Ireland is the same as this, yet small enough uh, to, to just do interesting and exciting things. But one thing we've learned is that cities, trying to change cities in one go, not easy. So we very much took a district approach um, and our first district in partnership with the Connect Research Centre and SFI was the Docklands back in 2018 where we brought together the technology ecosystem. You can see a little map there, just all the different key players. It's quite exciting. And actually looked at what are the challenges and how can we bring the technology to life, make it real. It doesn't matter if it's happening in Singapore or elsewhere. People want to see it in their locality and experience it and give feedback and iterate on what's possible. So, this was all built in the Docklands about connectivity. What can we do with the future of connectivity, with 5G, with all these new kind of things we talked about uh, in this session today? And, and really, you know, what kind of services can it enable? And if you look around the Docklands, from delivering a full you know, neutral host 5G network to you know, connected smart bins to floating sensors, it's actually real, it's happening now, and it's actually happening in Dublin, which I think is equally uh, exciting. And for us, you know, working with the market, engaging externally, brings new opportunities. A uh, big investment to build a, a 5G testbed years before we're talking about 5G helps us as a city to understand what are the challenges in putting these things up on poles? How do you get power? On the back of this, we've now setting up a telecoms unit to accelerate the rollout of 5G uh, across Dublin. And Docklands put it on the map. You know, globally, it's a center of innovation. And we're starting to attract projects internationally that would go to other cities, but now they're coming to Dublin, which is really, really exciting for us. Um, I love this one of uh, a couple of projects just to maybe inspire you. Uh, I don't know if you know the big belly bins, the solar compactors around the city. They compact the waste by about eight times, increase efficiencies. You know, I can go on my phone and see, you know, real time across 350 bins, what the fill levels are. They can be optimized. But in Docklands, what we did is we started putting other sensors uh, on the bins to measure footfall, to measure busyness in the city during COVID. And also now we're deploying things like Wi-Fi, 5G, and telecoms off these bins. So forget the Internet of Things, it's the Internet of Bins is the next buzzword. <laughs> um, one of the projects that we brought to Dublin a couple of years ago, I don't know if you remember this, but it was the Ireland's first autonomous uh, shuttle. And you know, it was really just about inspiring people about what the future could look like and getting a discussion and a debate about you know, how do we enable this. And it was really interesting that bus kept on losing connectivity. We were getting a bit worried around Dockland. So you know, we need great connectivity in cities to facilitate this type of uh, future. And that's very much about in infrastructure investments. Other areas I get quite excited about is 3D planning, using modeling. You're moving away from paper-based planning to kind of something that engages citizens and we can see what the future is like. But we're very fortunate to be able to bring together the ecosystem to look at what's possible and to inspire, uh, I suppose, cities and inspire citizens in terms of where we're going in all this. So this idea of moving from reality uh, to digital, digital twins, and then using those digital twins to explore, uh, I suppose, integration with other sensors and other data sets to help us better manage our cities and absolutely one of the big global mega trends uh, in smart cities. And we're very proud to be part of a flagship project for from Microsoft, as their, their CEO mentioned it uh, recently, but looking at how we use this uh, to actually engage citizens and think about the, the future of planning. Um, and I talked about the districts, the smart Docklands, and one of the things that's really, I suppose, put Dublin to the forefront is how we've built a whole network of these districts across the four local authorities. We're program managers, we're program teams to actually make the innovation real. So this is very, very uh, exciting uh, for us. And you can see just how it's evolved over the last couple of years. So you've got 
Our Docklands was the first kind of testing it out, and now it's really starting to, to scale up across the region. Uh, a few examples, Dublin City University, an amazing partner. Um, we love it because it's a microcosm of a city, maybe not during uh, COVID, but it allows us to do things like testing new technology with scooters to make them safer. We can do it on the campus. You can't do it on the streets of Dublin, maybe soon enough. Um, but also looking at projects like digital twins, energy management in buildings. It's really inspiring for us to partner with the university, with the Insight Research Center, and to make stuff happen on the campus. Another really exciting project that we've launched, and I, Martin Curley was here earlier, um, is looking at, we have an amazing cluster of health technology uh, hospitals around the D8 district. So we've built a new program called Smart Dublin 8, focusing on wellness uh, and health, which I think is a, a really important area that we need to get ahead of the curve. And rolling out pilots and projects, working with uh, the Irish Heart Foundation on social prescribing, looking at areas like virtual reality and mental health. So it's a whole suite of projects that are happening on our doorstep in partnership with others. Um, so just in terms of connected cities and connected devices, you know, some people don't realize that the city, we get a bad press, Dublin City Council, but we do some cool stuff internally that people don't normally hear about. We have over 100 sensors connecting river level data, uh, rainfall data, weather stations around the city. So when the rainfall is hitting hardest, we know what's happening and we can respond effectively. We work with startups and innovators to co-design new solutions, uh, working with Enterprise Ireland through the Small Business Innovation Research Program. We have two companies, M Semicon and um, Denalto, testing these low-cost sensors with low-power battery-based technology in over 50 gullies across the city. This technology didn't exist five years ago, and it's really low-cost, really exciting what's possible uh, with this. One of the projects that I'm very excited about, I get excited about lots of projects, you can, <laughs> is our Connected Ring Boy project. And this, again, is another project funded by the Deeper uh, Innovation Fund. So when we worked with local communities in Docklands, some of the issues were lifeboys. A lot of them go missing. About 600 a year, don't know where. Maybe stag parties end up in hotel rooms in the river. So we had this idea, what if you could you know, connect these with a low-cost uh, connectivity device? So we're working with four companies, a completely new type of procurement pilot to buy process, the first of its kind in Ireland. And with additional funding, we're going to scale this across 10 local authorities over the next four months. So really, really groundbreaking stuff happening in Dublin at scale. And like you know, Cisco and AWS and IBM today, we've got partnerships with a lot of the big tech companies on our doorstep. With Google, imagine being able to use the power of Google data to measure climate change, climate action in your city. We're working with the global environmental teams in Google to bring that to life. We also launched Google's first electric street view car uh, a couple of months ago um, to measure air quality uh, in the city, which was a first for us, first for Google uh, as well on the electric car. And projects that now come to Dublin because of our reputation now are starting in Dublin and scaling elsewhere. And Google now just launched uh, uh, the electric, uh, project, electric car project in Germany uh, over the last couple of days. So this is really exciting for us. Uh, it's really exciting for Dublin, really exciting uh, for Ireland. And, just to show how far the technology's come, I remember four or five years ago talking about, can you imagine putting air quality sensors in vehicles and imagine having real-time air quality data for our city and understanding you know, routes that are cleaner. DPD have just launched this in Dublin. 102 of their vehicles have real-time sensors connected with real-time data every couple of seconds and building um, over 22 uh, fixed uh, locations across the city. This is absolutely amazing. Like This is hard to imagine that private companies now can start getting into this space. So it changes the whole balance of how cities work collaboratively, how we manage this data, and how we engage citizens. And you know, an app we launched during COVID lockdown was our Dublin Cycle Buddy app, helps people find safer routes uh, across the city to cycle. We've had 5,500 downloads of this app. But we can then integrate real-time APIs from Bleeper Bike, from Moby Bike, from Dublin Bikes, and also real-time air quality data. So now the routes you're picking to cycle you can get the cleanest air route, you can get the safest route, uh, or you can get the nicest route as well. So really excited, download this, this is a, another great project. So one thing we've learned over the last uh, couple of years is that Dubliners love to experiment. We love to experiment, and we're very engaged in this space. And you can just see from some of the projects, you know, with 1,000 cyclists testing out our smart bike lights, measuring road surface quality and best routes in the city, from citizen engagement projects that measure traffic outside your house, with a little camera that can stick on your window so that you can then provide real data back to the city on challenges, air quality sensing, or a cycling app. 
And one area and project that we're very uh, proud of is there's all this technology and it's moving so fast, but we need to educate people in the city council, in public sector, uh, citizens about what the potential of this technology is, what the risks of this technology is, uh, and how can we make the most of it. So this is a very, another very exciting project, Academy of the Near Future, partnership with Connect, SFI, um, where we're actually teaching kids across Ireland, transition your student, over a thousand students engaged in this program. We're running a competition, Design Your Future City, uh, from November, so if anyone's interested in sponsoring that, uh, come up to me afterwards, we'd love it. <laughs> If you, if you think this is a cool idea. And this is an example of one of the workshops we ran with Rings End, uh, Transition Your Students. And actually, back about a year ago, they were looking at the Ring Boy problem and thinking about ways they could solve that. So we've actually taken that from an idea to a solution to reality and supporting four Irish-based companies to deploy this across Ireland. Um, so really, you know, smart cities, smart technology, it's about people. It's about delivering better outcomes for citizens and it's technology as an enabler. And uh, we're actually pitching tomorrow uh, for European Capital of Innovation. Uh, we're in the semi-finals, so if we win, we get a million euro, and we can do loads of cool stuff, more cool stuff. Anyway, so very exciting for us. And uh, yeah, so really delighted. I love what's happening here. I think future tech is what it's all about. I think Dublin is absolutely, and Ireland's at the heart of this, and we, we can absolutely be a global leader. So thanks very much.